Hiya, and welcome to Elden Ring. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the pillars of power within Elden Ring. Now, before we get into this, this video is very, very much for my older self. Um, essentially, I have never really got into one of these games, and I had a lot to learn. And essentially, we're going to be going through the list of things that can really, really affect your time within Elden Ring, and aka just give you a ton of power, uh, hit harder, be more efficient, uh, the systems in which you can kind of and have to play through uh, in order to have a much better time with it. Uh, if you are an expert at the game, you've been playing it since the first Souls-like game, then this video is absolutely not for you. But, for if you're like me, <laughs> who is a little lost in this world of Elden Ring, then I gotcha. Let's talk about the first pillar of power uh, when it comes to Elden Ring. Uh, this one is simple. Uh, you leveling up. Uh, we're gonna get into the specifics, uh, and I will tell you of a great, great farm spot, especially which will get your head above water and get you really, really moving and progressing in a wonderful light towards the end. Hopefully, I'll timestamp it. So, there is a lot here a lot of jargon on the screen you can do this I uh, go to explain and it'll tell you what everything kind of contributes to uh, but that's not what we're gonna be talking about uh, necessarily <laughs> what we're gonna be talking about is some stuff to ease your mind so first of all if you're like me you're wondering if you're maybe messing up your build because you're not investing in the right things you know how oh, I want to be good in faith or have my spells actually hit hard and they're not really doing that why is that we'll talk about that in part two because <laughs> your weapons are a huge part of that but this is also a part of that but yeah you think maybe you're investing in the wrong things. Um, I'm happy to report that, first of all, there's re-rolling, re so you can calm down, you're gonna be okay. <laughs> the second thing, my dude, um, is that a lot of things have a soft cap for a lot of the stuff in this game. So for instance, and this is a classic thing within a lot of the Souls games, but there is a soft cap for vigor uh, and and stuff like that. What soft cap means, a soft cap means, uh, hi, me here in post, uh, yeah, so I didn't do the best job of explaining what soft cap is. Soft cap is essentially the diminishing returns of investment that you're going to invest in a skill. So every attribute that you see vigor mind endurance all that can go up to 99 but there is soft caps for all of them uh, and the soft caps in case you're curious the thing in which you are going to get a significant diminishing returns uh, aka stop when you get to this point vigor soft cap is 60 strength and dexterity soft cap is 80 uh, spells aka intelligence and faith is soft cap is around 80 uh, now do note that strength uh, basically scales in a different way where if you two-handed a weapon you basically get essentially the most out of it because you double dip into strength it's weird anyways the reason why i bring up soft cap is eventually just by playing the game and investing enough time into things you are going to get your vigor to 60 you are going to get your strength and dexterity or whatever or whatever your build is to the right numbers that you want so if you have a strength build slash a melee build then you're going to stop around 56 if you're using two-handed weapons and if you have a dex build you're going to stop around 80. Um, so these are places where you know if your build's going hopefully at this point um but also you might be like but grin my problem is is that i don't know what to invest in um and i would say put as many points as you can into vigor until you find out that question which you'll find out that question just by playing the game and finding some sorceries maybe wikipediaing uh some awesome weapons that you want to try out and stuff like that you'll find your way i promise um, but just put some points into vigor because it's kind of an, a useful general thing to do until you find your way um, and again we'll make more video videos on pillars of power of weapons incantations spells and such but right now I'm just trying to give you some peace of mind that if you do invest in either vitality uh, or anything like that you'll be good to go if you're in proper order with what you're generally trying to build for mind is a little bit different mind is more balanced throughout the course so you'll always be achieving a small bit of mind but it will always be the same kind of uh, you know, 5% rather than it being 10%, 4%, and then exponentially getting lower as you su uh, supersede it. But anyways, what this means is put some goddamn points into Vigor if you're having a hard time. At least enough to understand the boss's uh, combos and not to get one shot. I was hellbent on not doing this when I first started because I didn't like the idea of me in not investing in the things that would give me back damage. Uh, and I don't really mind dying a lot on repeat. But point being is 25 into, into Vigor will give you a lot of play to where you can actually back up heal or maybe even tank a heal uh, shot th from the boss just to kind of understand their combos and give you time. There are some builds that counter that a little bit. If you're playing a mage, you don't need an abundance of, of uh, healing. In fact, you could go a little bit more mind. Um, so if you're playing a mage, you could use a little more FP 
I will say though, um, just with the how quick in Elden Ring you can get an incredible amount of vials, potions, there are like you can get like what, what functionally is like 10 potions right off the cuff within the first probably 30 minutes of the game. Uh, you can get a ton of potions, make them potent as hell, and you'll always be near a touchstone. Uh, they're spread out constantly uh, throughout the area, so you just touch the stone, you get all of your uh, flasks back, and then you'll be good to go. So I haven't really found you need much more magic unless you're playing a magic build that has very costly spells. Um, also, there'll be a third video in the series, the third pillar of power with an Elden Ring, uh, which will talk about the best, like, sorceries that you can get, uh, the best weapons that you can get, uh, those are probably the last two. Anyways, thought I would just talk to you guys about that really quick, but, but yes, you could use a lot of bind if you're specifically going into the magic category. Kind of obvious, it doesn't really play too much of a thing in the scaling department, so it's strictly there just to have a lot of more magic to gain. I think it's less necessary uh, if you're playing something that isn't completely mage-based, and even if it is, uh, you can just dedicate a couple hours to hunting down some seeds, having a shit ton of flasks, and just drinking all of them and being okay in that regard. Cool. Anyways, uh, so now endurance. Endurance is stamina as well as your ability to carry things. Um, not very many things scale off of endurance at all, actually, so it's not a scalable stat. This is like, again, <laughs> health, uh, magic, um, and of course stamina. Now endurance is valuable for some weapon arts. Um, essentially, sometimes they use like a little bit of endurance every time you use it. Um, but there are also ways to circumnavigate the need for endurance. So one of the things that you might be saying is, oh, Grin, I'll need endurance. I'm playing like a wizard and I need to get away from my, my subject if he's pushing on me, right? And if I don't have a lot of stamina, how can I do that? Well, you will need vigor, uh, but if you can make it to around like the 20% progression rate in the game, you can get this, which just fe takes a small, small portion of your magic and you can just close in ground and also you're invisible. We'll talk about how to get that in probably the third part, part of the or fourth part. So many parts. Um, I'll, we'll get to it soon. But anyways, point being is there's ways around your build and, uh, and your weaknesses. Uh, there's a thousand ways to crack that egg. Well done, uh, FromSoft. Uh, <laughs> but endurance is really, really useful if you're planning on playing warrior. Uh, less important, I think, if you have uh, if you're a mage because you can just get that ability, go a shit ton of mind. You're probably not going to be using a lot of weapon arts anyway if you're a mage, and that can just help close the gap away from enemies and be really good in that regard. But anyways, strength. Okay, so before we get into that, let's get into this. Uh, arcane. Arcane is basically just the luck stat of the game. Uh, you guys can see here it says affects holy defense vitality uh, in certain sorceries and incantations. Um, I haven't really felt the holy defense. I think that's basically what it's saying is I think it's a stat that basically gives you access to certain armors uh, and also incantations and sorceries. Uh, so if you have a certain armor set, you might need uh, a specific amount of sorcery in order to wield it. Arcane very much in my experience has felt like it's attached to intelligence, which is the magic stat, which we'll talk about in a second, but not before we talk about strength and, and dexterity. Okay, so dexterity and strength, I had a misperception of this. The base value is strength is going to give you the ability to wield better armaments uh, and also have a little bit better attack scaling on your hits okay more physical damage kind of what you'd expect it's like a damage skill right and dexterity they try to trick you <laughs> by saying it increases your spell casting time which it does it's hard to feel <laughs> but it does sure um, it also makes you harder to knock off your horse sure um, but one thing it also says is also boosts attack power for uh, dexterity scaling so, strength and dexterity are kind of you can put together. Where you are going to feel both of these stats being very, very prominent um, is in the weapons you can access. Strength weapons tend to be weapons that are big and require a shit ton of strength to wield. Dexterity weapons are usually fast uh, and have like really, really quick combos. The way these things are strong um, is specifically in this way. Uh, and we're gonna spoil uh, episode two of this series. Um, but right there, so you guys can see that there's a base requirement to wield certain uh, weapons efficiently. You can kind of get away with wielding them, although you're using them at half their capacity and it's not really advised. Oftentimes you can't even use their special gimmicks because you don't have enough strength or intelligence or whatever. But for, in for instance, this weapon right here requires 18 dexterity and 10 strength to wield. So that's your base requirements, but oftentimes they correlate. Uh, so you, can, you guys can see the attributes scaling. So this is where the weapon system and your build kind of have to merge, um, or you have to force them to merge, which we'll talk about specifically in part two when we're talking about the weapons. But essentially your attribute scaling is going to feed into your weapons damage. So when it says strength E or strength B, 
Uh, what that means is that, that this weapon is able to dip into your strength stat, increasing your your uh, your physical or your damage of your weapon by a lot. Um, if the rating is good, if you for right now it says uh, my strength scaling for this weapon is E, it's really low, so it means it's barely able to dip into my strength. E, dexterity wise, it's a little bit better. Uh, and I ac actually could make this even better if I wanted to, but I put a thing on it that makes it so that it dips into faith, which is my predominant uh, unit because I'm a faith build. Uh, and that's my highest stat, so of course I'm forcing it to dig into my faith stat because that's going to increase the damage way, way better than anything else. But yes, that is your kind of key to power, at least been, had that's been in my experience, is your attribute scaling dr dramatically it contributes to your weapons thing. So if you have a weapon, and it scales tremendously into intelligence and you have just enough intelligence to get by to use it but you have no intelligence investment in your skill tree and it has like a B rating in intelligence it's trying to pull from intelligence meanwhile you have no intelligence to pull from you understand so you're trying to get it to pull from the most high value stat you possibly can and you can force it to do that uh, there's something in the game called like blades uh, so if you're a wizard there's a specific wizard blade where you can to pull from intelligence in some way uh, which is very very valuable and very very good we'll talk about that again in part two but this is kind of where the damage comes from it doesn't specifically say that like dexterity is going to make me hit faster or, or deal more damage but it does because it does in this way because a lot of the melee weapons pull from either strength or dexterity and there's a few that dig into other things but a lot of times this is what everyone kind of takes a little bit from is strength or dexterity having a good amount of strength having a good amount of dexterity and having a good amount of faith uh, will make this weapon uh, and if I have high stats and all those things will make the weapon hit harder. So now let's talk about the other methods of power in Elden Ring, which is intelligence and faith. So this is your magic kind of units and synergies and stuff like that. Intelligence is the thing that's going to boost um, magic damage. So again, in the same way that um, our weapons, uh, specifically melee weapons, are pulling from uh, dexterity and strength, these, uh, which is are like, the, if I have a staff, it's the same thing. Uh, they're pulling from faith and intelligence, and sometimes arcane. I believe if I have a staff here, uh, it might pull. No, none of them pull from arcane. <laughs> Never mind. Pulls from a lot of intelligence. It also has a B rating in intelligence because it, so if you have 52 intelligence, that's actually good because it's going to take immediately from that level of intelligence as well, uh, just making it really, really good. Um, but anyway, you guys can see the same thing as strength and dexterity. It's intelligence for, for staffs and specifically uh, faith for those weird uh, like necklaces, wrists, whatever they're called. <laughs> little trinkets in your hand, the smaller thing, not a staff, but a little tiny uh, keychain or something. Now that's now that's how the damage scaling works, but intelligence is very much based off of like wand spells, incantations, is I believe what they're called. Basically magic sorceries. Uh, no, sorceries, that's what they're called. These are incantations, I believe. These are sorceries. So in, uh, sorceries, are very very cool they're basically like crazy you can call down meteors you're a classic wizard uh, they scale up really well and also this is huge uh, there's a lot of a lot of uh, of gear that requires intelligence very very greedy <laughs> if you don't have a lot of intelligence you best not have any <laughs> okay a lot of the stuff worth having intelligence requires a lot of it uh, but faith on the other hand is actually pretty chill at least it's been in my experience but faith is also an entire subgenre of magic it's pretty it's similar but different uh, it has at least in my experience way more utility in terms of it can buff you it can give you regen it can heal you um, it can do damage it can do aoe uh, which magic can do those too except not too many supportive abilities it's usually strictly into like providing damage and different ways of doing that damage so you can hit with a sword you can cast some meteors you can throw a couple spikes Whereas for me, for instance, my faith build, because since I'm actually that, I can cast some cool uh, razor claws, boom. I can uh, heal myself uh, like, like a beast, passively regenerate my health uh, for a long ass time. Uh, and of course I can also, uh, if I wanted to, I could go a little mad and absolutely rain death with fire all around me. Um, and yeah, so th those are the kind of things and it's kind of the difference of it. A lot of times faith seems like it takes a wind up cast, whereas magic you can kind of hold and then let go of, whereas faith it seems like you have to quickly cast. Kind of like if you guys have ever played Pyromancer or another of the Souls games, people say it's reminiscent, if not the exact same. <laughs> but, but yes, uh, faith and uh, intelligence are simply the stats that are scaling up based on your magic. So based on your build, hopefully now you guys understand, a lot of the game is based on having the weapon that you want and then looking at the stat attribute that it requires, the attribute scaling, and then investing in those attributes so your weapon actually hits hard. 
uh, and them having ways to basically force any weapon to be viable because you can force it to pull into one of those attributes. Like for instance, this weapon should not scale off of faith. I put a thing in it that makes it scale off of faith. It's kind of a mid game thing to do. Not really, you can kind of get by really fast. At least with faith builds, it's a little at mid game. But with any other build, intelligence, you can kind of supersede this and get your shit real fast. <laughs> but anyways, so that's the way I would describe the uh, the skill tree. And if you're, again, you're still hesitating, uh, I think until you get good gear, it's not a bad idea to invest in some vigor. And if you know you're going to be casting spells because you like the magic, sure, put some into mind, put some into intelligence. It's hard to go wrong there. Uh, but I do understand the kind of annoyance of like, well, what should I invest in? I don't even know if I have, I don't even know if I, the weapon that I'm going to use is going to be something I'm going to want to feed into. Which begs the question, uh, how do I get good gear? What kind of gear is going to be something that I like? And also, uh, this sucks because I'm killing enemies, I'm getting ruins, I don't want them to go to waste, so I have to put them in my skill tree. Well, what if there was a way to make it so that you could relax entirely about rune collection and just basically play the game, invest in what you want, uh, and never have to worry about you dying and losing your runes again because you can gain so many runes so fast, so quickly, so easily. There is a way to do that. <laughs> We're going to cover it right now, and I'm sure some of you definitely already know about it. But yes, this takes the edge out of uh, out of it, like losing your runes and maybe not wanting to invest in certain things because uh, you don't know the value. And again, I think you could, if you keep putting stuff into vigor, you should pick up some weapons eventually and realize, oh, that weapon requires faith. I'm a faith build. I started off as faith. I don't mind the faith powers. I'm going to uh, invest more in faith so I can use the weapon. You know, that's That stuff makes sense. Uh, in fact, maybe some of you guys are not very great at the melee combat or you don't have a good spell to really help you get your edge. So then what are you, what are you to do? Uh, am I just kind of going to he headbutt an enemy a bunch of times until I finally knock him down and then level my up, my, level myself up two times? Um, that sounds not that fun, Grin. I got you, buddy. You can basically hard level if you want. You can grind, 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 invest in the attributes that you most want. Again, get that vigor up to 25 so you can tank some shots. Uh, get your, uh, what if you know you're going to play a little bit of melee, if you know you're going to completely avoid melee at all costs and just go, uh, into intelligence, uh, then you can, of course, uh, also play melee if you just get an intelligent scaling melee weapon which is out there uh, but also you can uh, you can just heavily invest in that and have your spells nuke things uh, and magic is a very very strong uh, attribute in this game so so ladies and gentlemen it's as simple as follow this road uh, now your map if you're just starting out the game you're about to set off on your adventure um, and you haven't looked at those videos of how to get a strong start I might link one of those in the video description just because it's so useful and they will take you to the place anyway that we're about to talk about but anyways, if you don't want that, you're just going to follow this road, take a right, go all the way down, just follow this road, and the next time it forks after this bridge, um, there'll be an enemy on here too, um, you can just avoid him, you can avoid everything in the game, uh, you're just going to go left, and you're going to follow this road all the way straight down, and it's going to take you to this place right here. Uh, this place is going to take you to an end game uh, area after you go through a portal. So anyways, we just spawned in right here, you're going to go uh, basically to the back left corner, as you can see right here is like a little like a pond follow that there's a little wispy thing here it's going to take you to uh summon you to the front of this location oh also by the way you should definitely touch a lot of keystones along the way and you'll have uh you'll basically get torrent so you'll have a horse eventually if you're just making sure not to just completely beeline her there and whenever you see a glimmer or a grace touch it uh, and eventually later will be like here's your thing Anyways, you'll summon in here. That door will be closed. You'll have a big-ass enemy right here. Uh, don't fight him. He'll rip your head off. <laughs> Anyways, you're going to go all the way down here. Uh, you're going to pass all of these little tiny uh, like glob monster enemies. You're going to pick up that apple because it's real good if you haven't already. And by the way, this portion of the video is for people who are absolutely just starting out at the very beginning. Uh, if they get hit by anything, they'll die <laughs> kind of idea. Unless it's in the very beginning area. So you're going to make your way here. Touch this grace. Uh, this is going to give you a checkpoint for this area, which is nice. You're not going to always have to go through this thing. Uh, but that is not the checkpoint we're going to be using, especially if you've just gotten into the game. You're going to run past that enemy, head over to the east, uh, east, and uh, you're going to basically see that the edge, the cliff basically comes to an edge. Uh, and you're going to basically try to find a way down. You can go all the way around if you want, but it's far easier just to find this tree stump uh, to go down it. And there's a bunch of bombs. Uh, so you're going to want to stay again away from the main road. Uh, you can also drop down by that tree root. It doesn't matter. Um, if you're here at night, if you just happen to get unlucky and there's a night, it's nighttime, you might see a big warden horseman there. Uh, don't worry about it. You can run by everything in the game. You can sprint. Uh, and again, you're going to make your way over there to that glimmer. This is where the easiest version of an, a beginner farm, at least in my experience, has been. 
Uh, and also, it's it's a little bit, it's not so mindless that you're going to be bored out of your mind, maybe, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, you're going to touch this stone, boom. So then you're going to get up and you're going to face this way. So there is going to be a ball that is going to summon after you get to a certain degree. You're going to hook left and he is going to fall off of the mountain, giving you 2,000 souls and you have not done anything. You can do this absolutely when you've just started the game uh, with no thing because you're not actually attacking anything. So right here. He's going to summon in. We're going to go this way and he's we're going to sprint and he's just fallen off. And we've just gotten uh, 2,000 souls. Um, and sometimes uh, random enemies in the world space will have glowing eyes and they'll drop five times their allotted uh, souls. So that's pretty damn good. You'll get a lot there. You're going to touch the stone that will touch the, the uh, grace. Sorry, that will reset uh, that man. Uh, and then you'll be good to go to do it again. And this is a good way to get a, like a really good upper hand uh, really early on because you're most of the enemies you're killing are not going to give you 2000 souls. Uh, this is a strat meant for people who want an advantage and a big advantage at that a pillar of power, uh, a way to kind of completely be okay super not that bad you just keep running it uh and eventually you'll have around 50 and that'll get you a good bit of vigor a good bit of everything else hi ladies and gentlemen here post um i just want to make a, one thing uh, if you want this farm to be even better as soon as the ball falls down the thing dies gives you your souls open up your map and teleport to the very same graystone uh, a grace uh, placement and that will reset everything uh, allowing you to do this just a touch faster if you want to be more optimal but there is one more farm so this is the very, 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 very beginning farm that you should do. Um, it's uh, again, you don't have to do just about anything in order to get an advantage. It's really, really nice. Uh, you, you don't have to fight anything. But the reason why we touch this is because this is the second farm. If you want to actually level up and get a lot of runes, this is just a good ruin farm. This is the next part of the farm uh, that I would suggest you guys just do the one I just showed you for as much as you can until you probably find a weapon that you like, probably find some spells that you could use. Uh, and if you want to know all that, well, again, we'll cover it in part three or four <laughs> of one of these pillars. Anyways, uh, but yeah, these enemies basically spawn uh, a, a shit ton uh, of souls for you. So if you kill these enemies, they're going to give you a thousand souls. Now you guys may be like, but Grin, that's not that much, uh, but it is faster. It is faster. Also, it makes it's kind of funner. Um, and these enemies can be staggered locked pretty easily, but they do hit really, really hard, especially uh, if you're not careful. Um, and yeah, depending on your build, you'll know how to kill them. If you just want to cast some spells, that'll probably be pretty easy. And by the time, honestly, magic is so overpowered, you probably be pretty good just to kill them. If you want to get crazy or like you want to do this a little bit too like earlier than you should, you can uh, get behind them and hit them, but not like that. <laughs> I messed up. I am way too over leveled to be fighting them. You guys will probably have to hit them a couple times given your build and investment. Uh, but yes, uh, also if you're a mat, if you're a mage, I would highly advise going on your horse. Uh, and you guys may be like, what the hell? I can't use my magic when I'm when I'm having my horse, right? You hold Y and then you hit left click to the same way you would power stance with one weapon. Uh, and now you can actually use your magic or staff on horseback. It's a little weird, uh, but yes. Uh, and if you have like a lot of good magic spells, you can just hold cast. Uh, and just keep casting your abilities and you can kill them way, way faster uh, and keep moving on. Uh, and there's another one right over here. We're going to do our hold charge. We're going to huck a big ass <laughs> lightning thing at him, hit, hit him again. Easy peasy done. Uh, and yeah, this farm gets exponentially faster, faster, especially if you're on horseback. Easy peasy done. You, you are good, my dude. So yes, now this is your key to power. We got a pillar of power and here is your key to the castle. Uh, so again, the first run, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to fight anything, it's, but it's less fast than this one. Uh, so if you eventually get some teeth, uh, then use, uh, use them to bite uh, those enemies' heads off. Uh, and yeah, and that's basically it, guys. Again, uh, this was basically a video for me. I'm making this series for, for myself, my old past self, who is kind of lost and a little confused on what, what he ought to do and why he ought to do it. <laughs> uh, but again, Vigor, to me, is a good investment, depending on if you know if you're going to go more melee or more magic. Mind and Endurance is an easy choice. Just pick whichever one suits your fancy. Uh, understand that Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, and Faith are very, very much important, specifically if the weapon itself that you're interested in requires requires it. A lot of the weapons require a lot of base things. So for instance, a lot of these require faith because uh, they're predominantly faith casting abilities. This this gives you a C scaling in faith. This gives you a D scaling in faith. This gives you an A scaling in faith and this gives you a C scaling in faith. Um, but don't be fooled by just one thing having a higher rating because sometimes they can have two ratings, for instance, strength and uh, faith. Uh, and if you have a lot of strength and if you have a lot of faith, then this thing is getting quadrupled essentially in terms of its value. 
so stuff like that uh, as far as arcane goes uh, it, to me it's I have I found it's it's mainly there for for access to certain uh, weapons and and stuff like that uh, specifically incantations uh, but yeah, depending on what you want, strength, dexterity, faith, uh, intelligence, and faith are just the damage multiplier units that get directly fed into your weapon. So if you have a staff, it asks for a lot of intelligence and maybe even a little bit of dexterity or whatever, or maybe arcane, then that's pretty valuable to put in there. Uh, and yeah, that's basically it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But that, that to me was what I was confused by a lot when I was just getting into the game. As well as if you're struggling with the game, you don't have enough health, you find you're not dealing enough damage, this is a good way to push those weapons and give them a uh, greater bite. But again, realize that the weapon needs to jump into the attribute that you have. There's ways around that, and we'll talk about that in the next video. The second pillar of power, baby. Uh, hopefully that helped, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry if people uh, already knew a lot of this, but this, again, was not made for you. It was made for me, as well as you, <laughs> maybe if you're similar to me. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Hope you guys do enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully I can see you in the next video. We'll continue to cover Elden Ring because it is so goddamn charming uh, and enjoyable and just a trip, <laughs> an absolute trip. Uh, and if I can make your time experiencing it and playing it a little bit better by giving you a little bit more confidence and feeling like you know what to do, then I would consider that to be quite the quite the thing. <laughs> but anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of your day, and goodbye. Also, we stream the game a lot. I always forget to say it. Ah! <laughs> Bye. <laughs>